Decision Plus has been and still is a leading stock market service provider. From training to coaching, we cover it all. Try both our software as well as our coaching site completely free for 10 days without obligation. No credit card is needed to sign up for the trial. The trial subscription will be automatically canceled for you at the end. DecisionPlus.com, your stock market service center. Real-time coaching has been created. We search and classify critical reports and technical movements. You can visualize or hear the best buying and selling opportunities. Get real-time advice all day long and three live coaching shows per day. Let us do the work and save your time for trading. Try MarketGurus.tv free without obligation for 10 days in the menus above. Market Vision Plus is the trading companion of so many investors. Make your fundamental and technical analysis easy with Canada's number one stock market decision making software. Research, decide, and follow your positions with Market Vision Plus. See the menus just above this program and try Market Vision Plus for 10 days without any obligation after the show. When it comes to day trading, Trader Plus is the right tool. Track 50 quotes simultaneously. Create dozens of quick lists. Display as many as 30 real-time intraday charts at the same time. Watch the action with candlesticks or bar charts as fast as 10 seconds. See the market by sectors. Use the chart models already prepared for you. Try Trader Plus for 10 days in the menu above without any obligation. Hello everybody, welcome to the N Swing Trading Show. Today we're Friday, August the 21st, 2015. Uh, folks, we actually have a pursuit of the decline on the, the market. Just to tell you that the question board is open. If ever you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Now, with the market's correction today though, it continues to be a sell-off, a lot of worries on the market. We have here the situation on the NASDAQ that is pursuing its decline. Same thing on the Dow Jones, same thing on the SPY as well. I know that yesterday I've shown you several uh, stocks to short. As I said, you should not be in a shorting spree uh, yesterday on the market. But uh, if you have opened some short positions or some bearish ETF, I think you're definitely in a good position to take some profit. It's the same situation on all indices, though, even on the TSX. So this is why on MarketGurus.tv that you can have access for free for 10 days. What we have done, we have benefited from this decline to take some profit on several of our short positions as well as our bearish ETF. For instance, HVU was a bearish ETF we recommended around this area. Look, we, had re we remain really patient on HVU. Today we're in a clear situation where we can take some profit and we did so on HVU. SPXU was recommended around this area. We have been patient with that ETF. Today it's paying off. We took some profit on SPXU. GNS as well, when it reached that low, we took some profit on it. Same thing for Actrent, which reached its, its, uh, its bottom here. We also took some profit. And Dollarama, well, it's a stock that we got rid of because the stock is clearly reversing its upward corridor. I think we recommended that stock as a buy around this area. So we don't want to be uh, too patient and wait for the stock to actually go lower to reach 74.17. So it's a clear moment where those of you who have opened some bearish positions are really uh, in, in a good place because you're definitely able to take some profit in a lot of those short positions. Now, with this market situation, uh, can we have a rebound? I think with 600 points that the Dow Jones has lost in the last two days, that on the short term, really short term, that a rebound is likely. However, on the medium term, I think that we could definitely pursue its decline, which means that we could actually rebound there will be opportunities for day trading or for swing trading if ever there's a rebound. But in the medium term, I think definitely it's more likely that markets go down. And why? First of all, we have China, where the manufacturing data that came out 
continues to be negative. It's a low of the last 77 months. Also, what we have, we have the situation in Greece because the prime minister today announced new elections on the month of September. The Eurozone say that Greece needs to uphold its commitment to the Eurozone, especially concerning uh, the bailout that it just received. They received the first trench of the $86 billion yesterday. So those are all some factors that worry investors. Now also all eyes are in the Fed concerning what the Fed is going to do. We know analysts expect the Fed to not do anything in September, especially with what's happening in China, uh, with the worries uh, in Greece concerning the election, which new government is going to be formed. Is it going to be a government that is more, uh, not more in the left, but a government that's able to build up a coalition that can stand, that can create some political stability. Uh, so those are all some worries that investors have right now. And this is why HVU, uh, UVXY, which are volatility ETF, have performed really well. So it continues to be a situation, folks, where investors are worried. And now all eyes are next week are on the financial sector on the Canadian side, because on the financial sector next week, we're going to have several banks that will release their earnings. And it's important because what it's going to show us is are the banks being impacted negatively with all the debts that several energy companies had? We have oil today that is again going lower, testing the low of its downward corridor. We had, today there's a news on Baytex Energy that announced that they will cut their dividend, uh, reduce their capital spending program. So when a lot of energy companies are cutting the capital spending program, they borrow less from banks, which makes less money for those uh, for our banks. So this is why we have uh, TD, I think, that we release the earnings. We also have CIBC uh, that we release it, its earnings, uh, I think. So definitely we have several banks uh, that will be in a critical situation to watch. I think if ever they post strong earnings, uh, we might actually see a rebound on those banks. But right now we're testing the low of its downward corridor. And as long as the earnings are not released, I will not buy any banks at all. Now let's continue here with some news, folks. We had some news on Foot Locker that released the earnings. They did really well. They beat estimates. The stock is having a correction. I think the stock could not resist uh, the wave of correction that we have seen on the market, the worries that we have in the market. Uh, John Deere, well, they beat estimates, but the stock took a beating. I think it's especially what's happening in China. When we're talking about manufacturing activity that is going down in China, of course, John Deere, which has uh, businesses in China, is going to be impacted. So I think investors are taking that into account more than at their earnings that have been good. Poor stock. Uh, really, I think it would definitely be an opportunity for a buy, though, because uh, right now we've seen that the, there's some buyers who came in on that stock. But if you could stabilize at 85, John Deere will be a clear bargain on the short term. So definitely, John Deere, you have to watch that stock. Ulet Packard is pursue, it's actually rebounding after strong earnings. Salesforce is actually also having a, a rebound as well. And Gap is going down even if their earnings came down in line with estimates. So most sectors that were in a bearish cycle, such as the consumer discretionary sector, the industrial sector, the technology sector, are pursuing their decline. On the Canadian side, as I've mentioned, Baytex Energy, they will cut their capital spending, uh, their exploration and spending program. Uh, Tamarack Valley Energy, they announced that they will trade right now on the TSX uh, exchange, stock exchange, as of Monday, August 24th, 2015. This is when they will trade on the TSX exchange. They will keep the same ticker. So if you're a shareholder of Tamarack Valley Energy, now your shares will be on the TSX exchange with the same uh, ticker. And finally, we had Rogers and Shaw Communication that came up with a product that comes to uh, compete uh, with Netflix. So they offer a streaming service, which is called Shumi, and it will be sold for $9 per month. They're offering to their customers a one month free trial. And uh, so they actually want to compete Netflix. We know that Bell Media also launched their product and now Rogers is uh, stepping in. Now Eldorado Gold, talking of gold stocks, folks, we have a news on Eldorado Gold that they will stop their activities in Greece. We know that yesterday the Greek energy minister said that Eldorado Gold has violated some terms of the agreement that they had. 
So El Dorado Gold, they will stop their activities there, but they also are suing the energy minister or the decision of the energy minister to the Supreme Court in Greece. And this is why I think we're seeing a big decline in El Dorado Gold. And yesterday, all for momentum on the gold sector, though, is fading, not for gold, but for the gold sector. Look, the increase is not as strong as it used, as it used to be this morning. Uh, so stocks that were breaking out yesterday, Barry Gold or Yemena Gold, are really pursuing slightly, slightly the upward momentum. I think now that we're getting close to September, uh, investors are not so, the appetite today for gold is not that great because I think they're saying that maybe we're gonna have a rate hike, who knows? And why should we uh, buy that much gold uh, for the moment where if ever there's a rate hike, it's gonna be negative for gold stocks because the price is gonna go down. So right now you're in a situation where if you bought some gold stocks yesterday, I think you definitely cannot take some profits on them. You should continue to hold on to them. But if you bought some gold stocks on the beginning of this first cycle and you have not taken some profit yesterday, I think that today you're definitely in a position to do so on the gold sector. Now concerning some news, we had some news about retail sales in the, in the Canadian side. Good data there because we're still above estimates. Inflation numbers has increased. Uh, we are on a yearly basis at 1.3%. We know that the central bank, of the Bank of Canada target is 2%. So we're still below a Bank of Canada target. We know that they cut uh, their rate, uh, key rate uh, recently, Bank of Canada, but so far inflation is not uh, spiking up. I think as long as oil is not surging, uh, I definitely think that inflation will still be a week uh, on the Canadian uh, side. So next week, as I said, we have the GDP reading and also we have several banks that will release their earnings, starting with BMO on Tuesday, uh, Royal Bank of Canada on Wednesday, and TD on Thursday, followed by Scotia Bank on Friday, and of course, National Bank of Canada on Wednesday. So it continues to be markets that are pursuing their decline. I don't think that today you should be in a position where you should open a new short positions because as, as I said we expect on the short term a rebound so it's a more moment of a profit taking opportunity instead of shorting new stocks today with the 600 points of decline in two days on the Dow Jones. Find answers to your questions by emailing your host at btm at decisionplus.com Five good reasons to manage your investments with National Bank Direct Brokerage. Commission fees fixed at $9.95 anytime for all clients and starting at only $6.95 for active investors. No administrative fees if you hold at least $20,000 in your accounts. Registered accounts available in U.S. currency. Powerful tools to help you manage your portfolio. Award-winning customer service and satisfaction levels amongst the highest in the industry. To learn more, visit nbdb.ca or call us now. Real-time coaching has been created. We search and classify critical reports and technical movements. You can visualize or hear the best buying and selling opportunities. Get real-time advice all day long and three live coaching shows per day. Let us do the work and save your time for trading. Try MarketGurus.tv free without obligation for 10 days in the menus above. So welcome back, folks. So you guys are not really talkative today. You're not asking any questions. Uh, I don't know if it's because the market is boring today or uh, the market's lost so many points that you, some of you might be uh, disappointed or happy. I don't know. But if ever you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate uh, to ask them. So we have Bear uh, that is asking questions. Given the global uh, macroeconomic picture, picture, do you agree that a rate hike will uh, deepen and prolong the severity of this bear market? Well, definitely yes. I think that a uh, rate hike is something that's going to be um, negative eventually on the short term, but I think in the medium to long term it's going to be healthy because really the boost that we have seen recently in the market uh, has been led by the quantitative easing or the low interest rate environment. Uh, right now, what's, what's encouraging I think so on the short term, this is why I believe we're going to have a decline. First of all, if ever there's a rate hike, 
US dollar is going to be strong. So all the other currencies or all the other emerging countries that have actually have some debt that are issued in US dollars, well then that will cost them more. I'm talking of a lot of commodity producers in Brazil, uh, in India, in China. Well then those companies are going to take a hit because they have to pay down their debt at the currency, which is the US dollar, that will be higher. So more money for them. And we have a low commodity price environment because of the strength of the US dollar. So it's going to be negative in the short term. A lot of companies are going to take some hit. Now, on the medium term, I think it's going to be healthy. Healthy in the sense that first, on the US, companies continue to make profit. Uh, we still have earnings growth. Uh, a lot of companies now are starting to increase salaries of their employees. We're talking, for instance, of Walmart, which actually has said that they don't expect to have a great earnings in the next quarter because we're investing more in our in our departments and our company and also we are increasing salaries for a lot of employees so this is actually some good thing when companies are giving salaries giving rate um, salaries hike to their employees that is something that will boost inflation and i think by only increasing the interest rate slightly just by i'd say i don't know 25 basis points or 15 basis points i think it's healthy for the economy because investors are going to take into account that look money is not free to borrow uh, the Fed is raising interest rates, so uh, might as well actually um, focus on companies that can outperform. Um, so definitely, I think it's going to be healthy for the medium to long term to have a rate hike, even if it's done uh, gradually, because uh, right now having a low interest rate environment, I think it's uh, definitely uh, positive for the market. That, that is what is allowing most indices to actually maintain all of their 2015 gains or stay within that range, right? Not losing anything so far, except on the Dow Jones, right? Which is actually really weak, uh, but the SPY or the NASDAQ so far doing uh, pretty okay in terms of their uh, gains. So I think it's gonna be some kind of a mixed signals, but on the short term, definitely, I think that we could have uh, continuity of pursuit of the decline. Uh, so this, if ever, I hope I answered your question really well, Bear. If ever you have any other questions, of course, uh, feel free to ask them. You always ask uh, interesting questions. I definitely love your input on this show, Bear. It's really appreciated. Um, now, folks, I want to show you here. Uh, in terms of day trading, um, it was really tough to find some opportunities for day trading because even some, the bearish ETF today, well, they did have, they did perform well, but um, if we take a look at this, for instance, let's take a look at FAS, uh, which is a bearish ETF. It only surged by 5.23%, so you definitely didn't have that much of an inch of entry points on that, except one here, and since then, well, you could have one that is just starting now, but it's only one uptick. We need a second uptick, higher than that one here, to confirm the strength of this breakout. Uh, now, also look, taking a look at the markets, though, we're still unable to make a new low. So we did make a first low here, which was interesting for an entry point on those bearish ETF. Now, since then, we're still waiting for markets to make a new low. Now, Don has a question here. Chris, where's the next support for USO and CPG? Well, support for USO, Don, it's tough to tell. Um, right now, we see that we're still at a range where we we're at the low of this downward corridor. Uh, really, the USO bullish cycle is going to be determined by how strong demand is. Demand is still weak. We still have an oversupply. So really, short term, medium term, until 2016, a lot of analysts expect oil to pursue its decline. Some analysts even say that they expect oil to be at $10. I think it's kind of ludicrous uh, to have oil at $10. But uh, definitely, I think that oil decline uh, could actually continue as long as there's, or at least stay there, as long as we do not have enough demand. So for me, I cannot make the call where is the next support on oil because even if we're totally oversold, there's no buyers who are coming in on oil. So this is actually tough. Now, as for CPG, Crescent Point Energy, uh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's tough to say because look, Dan, there's definitely there's no support that we can look forward to, right? We had a support here that was clear, but since then, no one uh, now there. Since then, it's so complicated now to say that. Now, one thing I would like you to look at, there are two indicators that could confirm that Crescent Point Energy is confirming a short-term bottom. First, 
look at the 933 stochastic, see if it could be towards the 30-40% range. That will confirm that there's a wave of buyers on CPG. But so far, we cannot say it's a bottom on that stock. Second thing, look at the histogram. See if the stock continues to make new low, what is the histogram doing? Are we making new low while the histogram is going up? That will confirm a bullish divergence and that will confirm a possibility of a rebound that is coming on CPG. Now, what would be the targets of that rebound? What I advise you to do is to put a Fibonacci retracement from that top to that bottom here. And we see that if ever we have a histogram that is starting to be into positive territory or heading towards positive territory, a stochastic that is starting to be towards 30-40%, that CPG could reach 17.18 as a first target. But so far we don't have that. We still have weak oil prices. There's nothing that could confirm where CPG could start because there's no support really on CPG, right? Even this downward corridor that we could have considered we went lower than that downward corridor. So it's kind of tough right now to give you a call on when is, where is the support on CPG. However, I think whenever we have a stabilization space on the energy sector, on oil, and we have a technical indicators of CPG around 30% on the stochastics and a histogram towards positive territory, I think that will be the signal that will tell you that, okay, let me open some positions on CPG and then 1750 will be a target where you could actually take some profit on CPG. But right now, it's not a timing at all, Dan, to open any positions on CPG with the weak oil price environment. And I think that until 2016, I don't think that oil could actually have an important rally because there's too much supply, not enough demand. So that's it, folks. See you next week on the Swing Trading Show. Thank you for your questions, and I wish you all a good weekend.